was your experience like on a podcast before? Are we starting already? Maybe. <laughs> Because I don't want to start with, because I'm doing an intro on the side already. Okay. And then I'm going to be like, and then we're just going to talk, 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 and Taras get into the conversation. Okay, so, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Experience in a podcast before. Ooh, she's put on her radio voice already, guys. <laughs> You're learning, right? She's like, she's like, experience on a podcast. <laughs> experience. <laughs> um, it was, it was very strange. You've done one podcast. I've done one podcast. Okay. Why was it strange? Uh, because I'm not used to being interviewed. Mm. I think that's it. I, I'm used to being the interviewer. Um, and I think you have that feeling as well. I think w as soon as you get into somebody else's podcast, you would feel uh, a strange. Jenny, oh, Jenny said the same so thing. Weird. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Jenny said the same thing. She was, she messaged me after her episode and was like, man, it was so awkward for me to be interviewed. You know, I'm usually on the other side. We are always like on the other side. Sure, man. Mm. Mm -hmm. So Faye, mm, what's up? In your own words, <laughs> who are you oh. and what do you do? I really feel how someone describes themselves really sets the tone for who they are and who they want to be. Okay. So in your own words, who are you and what do you do? All right. No pressure. I was going to go for something very basic. <laughs> go uh, on, just do say, it. Say the basic one and then I, say like a good one. <laughs> Um, I'm Faye or Faezwana, if uh, you'd like to put a brand on it. I am 34. I'm a mom of two. I work a lot and I like working. That's pretty much it. Let's go for something more exciting. More fancy. Huh? More fa fancy. Uh, I'm Faye. Uh, you can call me Faezwana <laughs> as well. Um, I like to do a lot of things but I know I can't do everything. So that stops me from doing a lot of the things that I want to do. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. So, so mysterious. Oh, so mysterious. It's, mm. But yet I, I totally get what you mean. Okay. You're a very curious cat. I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. That's the actual saying. Really? Yeah, that's the full saying. Did you Google that? Yeah, I did. Oh. Because that's the actual full description of the, the phrase. Wow, that's completely taken out of context yeah. then. Because okay. everyone always thinks, oh, curiosity killed the cat, so don't be curious. But actually, satisfying that curiosity brought it back to life. Okay, fair enough. All right. Uh, you said you do a lot of things, Faye. Okay. <laughs> Could we try to figure out or try to list out the million and one things that you do? That's the thing. I, because I'm a very restless person. So I have my day job. I have my radio job. I have my MC gigs. I have the social media stuff. I'm a mom, which is a job in itself. You're a wife. I'm a wife. Um, I feel like I'm taking care of a home. Uh it's that. And every time I sit down, I feel like I can't sit down. I yeah. have to do things. You've even dabbled in business. And stuff I've like dabbled that. in business a little bit, but that was only mainly because it was COVID time okay. and there was a bit more free time than usual. So there were, there weren't a lot of MC, there were none. Um, and uh, so of course I went for business, do okay. some business stuff. Yeah. yeah. Out of all these things that you do. Okay. <laughs> I feel like it's so, <laughs> so formal. Why are we it's so, so formal? Yeah. Okay, chill. Out of all, all right. these things that you do, coffee. Um, okay. which do you feel brings you the most joy? Now, don't feel oh. like you have to give the most, you know, typical answer because everyone's going to be listening and judging. Be like, of course, being being a mom brings me the, you know, like, <laughs> don't feel like you need to. No, I can't say that. This being is, a mom <laughs> gives me so much joy. This uh, is a judge-free zone. Okay, okay. It's just a conversation between you and me. No one's going to be listening to this. A way. job that gives me so much joy. No, which one gives you the most joy? The most mm. joy. <sighs> okay, I'm going to be very selfish right now. Mm. I would say MC gigs. Really? Yeah. That, that, yeah, that actually caught me off guard. I thought the, okay. whole, radio, the whole radio thing was, okay. was the one that would... Uh, but why, why MC gigs? All right. So I would... I was thinking about radio at first, um, 
because I get to be with my friends, one on, uh, and it's easy. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, and and it's pretty easy that you just get to sit there, you play music, and uh, you get money out of it. But with MC gigs, it's just such a short period of time that you get to work, uh, minus all of the preparations that you have to do before that. But then when you're there and you get the audience responding to you, I like it. With the radio, no one's responding to you unless you get texts. Yeah, you gotta, I think with radio, you have to be comfortable talking to yourself. Correct. But you have to talk like again. you're talking to someone else. Yeah. But yeah. you do that too, right? You do talk to yourself. I talk to myself a lot when I drive. Me too. When I rehearse, like okay. that's how I rehearse. That's yeah. how I come up with scripts for, you know, social media or scripts for magic tricks. Yeah. I have to, I have to say it out loud for me to actually hear what it actually sounds like. Before I got here, mm. while I was getting ready, <laughs> I was talking to myself. But while I was talking to myself, I was in my head, you know what? I'm going to forget all of these things. I'm saying so, so many profound things that I'm definitely going to forget. And uh, yeah, I thought that my intro wasn't that great. I, I, I'm pretty sure I had a better intro. Was that the intro you practiced? I have no idea anymore. <laughs> I completely forgot what I said. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So I think MC gigs give me so much joy just because I get to a response from people. And uh, when you see people laughing, when you're actually making a joke and people are laughing, it's nice. People are listening to you and seeing, especially when you are giving out, giving out a prize. That's pretty cool. I like it. And uh, it's good money. Okay. We'll, talk, we'll touch on the topic of money in a second. <laughs> um, now, a lot of people. Okay. Uh, I've heard this before multiple times. Okay. They say it's like, oh, so easy to be an MC. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't see a lot of the work that goes on behind the scenes and on the show day or show night itself. Correct. So, Faye, what goes on before an MC gig? Ooh, that's a lot. Mm. Um, so usually when a client tells you that, well, you know, would like to hire you, for a uh, for an event i would have a script ready and they would they would look at the script and it's the script writing that takes a while but actually not really so when you are already experienced <laughs> do you right? just do do you, you just, just contradict no, yourself i'm so confused right now because <clears throat> I know people say, oh, you know, it's it's very easy. And sometimes I want to agree with them. And I say, actually, it is quite easy. It mm. is easy because you're just reading from a script if it is completely scripted. But if it's not scripted, then that's when it just, you know, you have to think on your feet and all of that. But uh, yeah, so I do a lot of script writing, practicing, which doesn't take a lot. By the way, it comes with experience, right? Wow. Right? Don't you it think does. so? It does. Don't you think so? Because I don't think that our job and say, for example, we're being paid for a certain amount for a two hour event. Okay. Let's, let's get that out of the way right now. I'm okay. sure people are asking, okay. how much can an MC make in Brunei? Specifically generic rates. Gen English, English MC. Okay. English MC. Uh... Uh, okay, it can. As it starts low, off at about two hours, right? Every two hours. Two hours. I well, I would charge a minimum of five hundred. Yeah, I think that's market rate as well. Correct. So when I joined Crystal FM in two thousand eleven, mm -hmm. and I got offered my first gig, I remember talking to Jenny about this. And market rate for an English MC for two hours is five hundred. Correct. Yeah. Do you have you gone up since then? Yes and no. Okay. This always depends on who the client is. Mm. Um, if I know the kind of event that they're holding, sometimes it's an easy 10 minutes yeah. and then you're done. Even, But they'll charge you for a whole hour and you would charge the full rate and it's just 10 minutes and I'll, I'll be okay with that. I'll stick to that. Um, but if it's a different client and I know that, I've heard that they can be a little bit more heavy mm -hmm. with the program, then I would charge a little bit more. 
and also depends on your mood, right? Yeah. If you don't have anything happening that week, then okay, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, but if you are completely busy, then of course you'll charge a little bit more, yeah. right? It just always depends. I can never give a straight answer. Also, there's there's an art to bargaining, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you figured it out? Oh my. Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. It's so hard because sometimes I feel, okay, I really want this gig. I want this gig. So I'm going to go what, for what what makes you consider that you want a gig? Uh when I want money at the time. <laughs> okay. Hey, at least you're honest. At least you're honest. Right? For uh, sure. I have I have things to pay for, Nazri. Yeah. Uh so yeah, if I really wanted that gig and there's nothing happening that week and of course I want it and I really want it and I'm okay to lower the price a little bit because you know sometimes companies or clients they ask three different MC MCs uh, for their rates and they'll go for the lowest one that's just standard company procedure correct get three quotations yeah get the cheapest one so you want to go for okay I know who this person is looking at and this person is looking at um, and I'll charge just a little bit lower and Sometimes I get it. Sometimes I don't. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, what are your thoughts of? on, I think, within that MC economy, that oh. MC market, for the people who undercharge? Because we've, we've heard stories yeah. where MCs... Because there's no union in Brunei. There's mm. no, there's no, I mean, it's- Somebody it's, wanted to start one. Really? Yeah. The social media world, the MC world, the gig world- is cowboy country. Yeah. there It's the wild, wild west. There are no rules. There are no sort of, you know, things to base procedures or standards off. Uh, all we know is, oh, standard price, English MC, two hours, $500. Yeah. That was starting point for everyone. Yeah. But then obviously there are, we hear stories, um, there's MCs that charge 100 for two hours, 250 for two hours. What are your thoughts on, on when things like that happen? So I think when people do that, it is mostly because they don't know how much they're worth. Wow. Don't you think yeah. so? Or how much work is involved. Uh, or how much work is involved. So I think both of us, I, I don't know how, how much you started off when you um, first had your MC gig. But when I first started off, I did three days for $900. Wow. Full day event? It was a full day event. Well um, done, I think buddy. it was a full day, full day, and then a half day event. Royalties were involved. <gasps> And I charged 900 because it was my first gig. For sure. It was my first big gig and my first gig ever. And I thought 900 is a lot of money. And, um, and, and for a lot of people as well, that is still a lot of it money. It is a lot of money. My first job working with a bank, I got $600 a month. Correct. And the fact that you can work two and a half days and get 900, 900. that is good coin. And I was, I was a little bit confused at that point. I was like, oh, is this, is this the rate that they are okay with? And the more I do it, and I think the next gig I had, I charged maybe about 250 for, for two hours, just because I wanted to see and feel. And I thought 250 for two hours was still quite a lot. Um, but then after a while, you see that people are hiring you based on your experience mm -hmm. and how good you are. And I'm glad. Um, and if more people want you for that rate, then you're undercharging. And I think a lot of people are, I think the new ones, newer ones are undercharging. And I think once they realize how much they're worth and how much work goes into it, they'll have to raise it. For sure, because- Especially after hearing this and they yeah. think, what? what? You get 500 for two hours as a starting? No, yeah. like, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's one thing Dini said uh, a while back to both of us yep. in terms of rates for mm. being an MC, right? Okay. He says he purposely charges a little higher. Yes. Uh, because, um, and this is something that sort of switched a gear in my head as well. He says, I charge this amount because- if anything, that is two hours away from my children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if even if I don't get the gig for the price that I quoted for, at least I still have time with my children, which I was like, oh, that's true. Because for me, I was like, oh, what if I don't get the gig? You know, maybe should I bring my, my rates lower? 
Because in Brunei, I think the gig market is one of the few markets that just never increases price or in, in, in market every single year. Right. Right? We stay. We stay at the same rate. Inflation rates. is happening, yeah. but we stay where we are. For yeah. sure. And I've, for the last three years, I think, every year I've sort of increased the rates. Mm-hmm. And I think at first I was like, oh, I don't know if I should charge this much. And then I remember what Denny said. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. If I don't get it, now that I have a kid, I at least I get to hang out with him. I have time to spend with him. And if they do want to pay, then it's it's my my uh, time worth away from my my son. But don't you think that, okay, so say for example, you know, you charge, uh, just an example. Okay, okay. $800 for two hours, yeah. right? And you say, I'm just going to charge this and see whether or not people will take it. Mm-hmm. And if they're not going to take it, I get to spend, you know, yeah. two hours with my kid. But it's two hours of either you can lower it down to $700. Yeah, yeah. $700 in two hours. But also, Faye, we have so many, like I personally feel I have so many years of experience, right? Right. And I think the only, one of the reasons why I do put a price at a certain range mm-hmm. is because I feel like I'm, I'm worth it. Okay. Right. I, I feel like I'm worth it. Right. And because I value what I do and I, I, I see where the value is in me as a service provider. Like you said just now, some people charge really low because they don't properly value themselves. Yeah. And I just feel, I think, you know, I, I'm worth, I'm worth this amount. You know, I've, I've been to, I've been to gigs uh, all over the, all over Asia. Right. Yeah. So I've seen, I saw an MC for an HBO event. Uh, in KL. I saw a few MCs while I was in Singapore, while I was in in Indonesia. Dude, like you, Tina, Dini, myself could easily run rings around these people. Do you think so? Genuinely. I was watching it. I was was, was at an HBO Asia event. The English MC was good. And I feel, I've seen you work. I know what your working style is like. I, I know how I work. I feel we were just as good, if not, I think potentially better. Okay, this is something that I was practicing while I was getting ready and I was talking to myself, (laughs) right? I'm just going to admit it right now. Um, There is a fine line between insecurity Mm -hmm. and humility. Of course. When you say something like that and I feel like, really? Mm that could come across as insecurity. Of course. Like, I I don't think I'm good enough. But it's not that. It's me thinking I have that much humility to say I'm not the best. There are people no. who are the best. Even when we first... I didn't say you were the best. Yeah, I know. I said but that you were, you know, That us, I can't do that it. That we were on the same level. Well, potentially better. Because okay. I've seen... I know what it, it's like to MC. Right, I've yeah. seen you MC, yeah, yeah. and I want you to know, hey, if you were to MC in KL, I feel like you could easily run circles around some of the MCs there. True story. And this is objective, non-biased opinion. Because okay. when I look at when I look at other magicians, when I look at other MCs, I genuinely step out. I don't mm-hmm. put my MC or my magician hat on. I look at. I think as a magician, one of the things that we needed to. Uh, when we're watching a magic act or when we're critiquing our own work, we cannot look at it through magician eyes because I yeah. think we're looking at it through different lenses, right? So I, I feel I'm, I'm very aware okay. when I'm sort of looking at performers or looking at MCs. I, I'm fully aware of my feelings towards them, whether they're biased or non-biased or objective. Is it because I hate them? <laughs> Is it yeah. because they look great in skinny <laughs> jeans better than I do? You know, so like, like yeah. uh, little things like that. And I, I really feel like... I, I think just own it, man. I know you're, I, I, I literally said that this was years and years ago, you know, granted years and years and years and years ago. But I, w- I remember sitting there. I was like, wow, Dini, Faye, Tina, Jenny, like could easily like hang with these people, could easily potentially run circles around these My people gosh. as well. And that's, that's just me being honest. Like I have nothing to gain from this. Mm, so, so, so there's, yes, there's the humility, but I also want to, I want you to own it that you're a pretty darn good MC, dude. Oh, thanks. But 
okay, okay. Stuff like that, that boosts my ego. And I'm not I here will... to stroke your ego, Faye. <laughs> I'm here to just tell you facts. Continue. <laughs> Um, well, I, I don't even know where we're uh, yeah, at now. Um, I think okay. we, were, we were just talking about, okay. like, like, I'm not here to stroke your ego. I will take that and I will put it in my pocket hmm. and I will take it out when I need it. Yeah, please That do. kind of um, ego boost. Actually, now that I think about it, uh, something that stuck in my core memory was that when I was emceeing, at one point there was somebody who was from Malaysia who was there in the audience and she actually came up to me and said, wow, you're really good MC. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, I, I think you should MC in KL. There you go. And I went, what? Surprise. I was that woman. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know it. I knew it. I needed you to know. She was wearing glasses at the time. I told her, hey, you know, how else? I mean, if it works for Superman, <laughs> it must work for me, Faye. That's you. But yeah, so what did you say? No, I, um, I, was, I was very confused by that. I was, well, obviously my ego was whew, up there. Um, but also at the same time, I feel like I'm like everybody. I'm waiting for that opportunity to come instead of chasing it. So one of the things that uh, we listen to, my favorite podcast in the world is Armchair Expert, Dax hey. Shepard, Monica Padman. Yeah. Um, and so Dax just, he just did an episode with John Stamos okay. from Full House. And he was also, they were talking about the, the conversation of compliments. Like, oh um. man, you're a sexy mother trucker. You know, that sort of thing. Right. And then Dax said- he used to, you know, when someone says, wow, you're such a good actor. And he would always deflect. He would always deflect and say like, oh, actually, um, I'm just, my memory is just really good because I'm dyslexic. So, you know, that sort of thing. Right. And one of the things they work on in therapy is, you know what, you know, owning it and, and saying thank you and just accepting the compliment for what it is. Oh, but it goes back to that whole humility part. For sure. For sure. It's so hard for me to just sort of take it in and be like, oh, thank you. Where, where do you think that stems from? I have no idea. <laughs> don't go there. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I don't who, know. Who hurt you as a child? <laughs> I think it is the society okay. as a whole, yeah. right? Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. As a, Be as, careful. No, 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 no. But as Bruneians, mm. we are very, oh, thank you. It's so yeah. malu See, malu. They say thank you. We're very shy. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I say thank you. you. I wouldn't deflect it. Okay. I was like, oh, I'm going. Yeah. But, but you it's don't not, genuinely it's, believe in yeah, it. Yeah, it's not me going, oh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am the best. I am a great radio DJ. I am a great MC. I wouldn't do that. I would okay. just say, oh, all right, thank you. I, I mean, do you have moments where you sit down and you're just like, I may not be the best, but I'm pretty darn good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much it, right? Laughing? Like, yeah, it's a, it was just, you know, like, it's, it's just, just levels. It's just levels, I think. I, I think mean, it's just levels. I think if you were to ask me this, maybe uh, 10 years ago. Oh. When I was 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So if you were to ask me- I'm kidding, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to ask me this 10 years ago, yeah with my very little experience of doing anything, yeah. my little experience of communicating with people, uh, reading people and all of that, I would probably say, you know what? I can do more. But now, yeah, I'm like, I may not be the best. I'm pretty darn good. Hell yes. I totally <laughs> so, agree, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm I, I would have been great. the same. I, yeah. was, uh, I was more insecure then. I wasn't sure who I was and who I wanted to be then. Right. Definitely had identity issues, you know, definitely had daddy issues, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. But I think nowadays I'm, I'm beginning to embrace it. Like, you know, someone says, hey, you know, you're a good magician. Thank you. I, I've practiced since I was 18. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I should be good. Yeah. If I'm not good, I'm definitely doing something wrong. You I've know what I mean? I've been doing this for yeah. 11 years. See? 11 like, years. If you don't think you're good by that time, I... I I think there's some issues there. So Faye, mm. you know what? This ain't a place for humility, bro. This podcast, kick humility out that door. Right here, you're the I'm effing amazing. best. Okay. All right. Yeah. Is, is that too much? No, no, you can. You can. You okay. can go ahead. <laughs> okay. So Faye, um, let's backtrack a little bit. Okay. 
I want people to sort of know that just being an MC isn't just stepping on stage and talking, right? right. So one, meeting the client. Oh yeah. Right? Number two, quotations. Oh. Then number three, program flow. Mm. Then you get your script draft and then you have to do rehearsals and then you have to do the show. And sometimes mm -hmm. during the show, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Will go wrong. Um, and that's when experience comes in and you really earn your money there. I believe that. Yeah. That's why people hire you, right? For Correct. your experience. And so that, you know, when something happens, you're going to help make sure that everything runs smooth and no one is none the wiser. Because it's not just us being MCs. I feel at that point, you are also event manager, coordinator. You're your own floor manager. You are liaison to whoever you need to speak to. You can't, you're not just speaking to the client. Say for example, if you're um, MCing a wedding, you're not just speaking to the bride and the groom. You're talking to the bride's parents, the groom's parents, the cousins, the sisters, whoever. And it's just, it's a lot that we need to look at and see to make sure everybody's on the same page. And most of the time, people will only be on the same page during the actual time. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Before that, and, no one knows And what's then sometimes happening. when everyone's on the same page... Things that are just out of your control happen. Correct. And do you have any horror stories? Uh, or rather not say. I had the MC gig with you. You remember? Oh, yes. Okay. It was for a launch. We won't say what industry. Correct. We won't say. Okay. You know, it was for a launch. It was for a launch. Um, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. It went really wrong. But we, they practiced it before. Multiple had, times. Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything mechanics, uh, everything, everything. We, they practice. Technology, It worked man. perfectly every yeah. time. Yeah. When the show finally happened, um, I think the curtain got stuck. Stuck. Electricity blew out. Correct. It was, it no light. Everyone nothing. was stuck in the dark. There was no speed, no voice, Anas no audio. Was there, I think. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh. Uh, air, the air con started leaking. Correct. Uh, it's just everything that, and plus, and that's something that was out of our control. And how did we, how did we try to fix it, Faye? I was screaming at the top yeah. of my lungs, I think, for whatever I wanted to say, because the venue was huge. It's huge, pitch black, then the emergency lights came Correct. on. Correct, and nobody could hear us. And uh, we both, I think you started to say something, and then I just started to say something. But at the same time, you can hear people trying to pull the curtains down to uh, launch something. this item. Yeah. And uh, my goodness, that, yeah. was, that was, I think the worst thing that could have happened at a gig. Yeah. But yes. we learn. I'm glad my experience was with yeah. you. And also, <laughs> and also I think people, people would understand. In a situation like that, I'm pretty sure everyone that was there was just like, no one could have seen this coming. You no, know what I mean? No. I mean, they practiced it yeah. quite a few times. So crazi. Kasihan pulang. I kind of want to ask a people's yeah. viewpoint. And if Anas was there, how Anas, he... were you there as a guest or were you working? Oh, you were a photographer. Working. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, bias, bias opinion, cannot, cannot, cannot. Okay, cannot. okay, okay. Has to be ah, guest. Never mind lah. Yeah, right. so I, I really think, so when someone, when when an MC gives you their rates, especially if they're an experienced MC, mm -hmm. not only does it come with the experience of different situations, different emergencies, uh, not only are they paying for someone who knows how to make everyone feel welcome, knows how to move the program along if it's, you know, holding back a little bit. Right. I really think that's that's what really justifies the cost of a good MC. Has anyone actually said to you, eh, mahal eh. Yeah, always. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And if it's a long-term client or someone I'm willing to build a relationship with, I'm willing to have a little bit of a wiggle room. Fair but enough, also, yeah. um, Sometimes I, I, I really do feel like, hey, uh, you know. Put your foot down. Yeah. Uh, oh, but in the most, you know, respectful way possible. I said, I feel like, hey, uh, I've been doing this for a couple of years now. And every year I do try to develop my skills yeah. and try to be a better MC than I was last year. And that's why, you know, my rates are probably increasing or that's why I charge this much. And I totally understand if, if that's not within your budget right now. And that's okay. Yeah. Uh, and if there's something we can do in the future, I'd be happy to, to work something out. Okay. Yeah, that's how I would sort of handle a situation like that. What about you? Uh, 
not that people would say, eh, mahal eh. Yeah. Um, more like I get ghosted, which happens mm. all the time. Totally and I, and totally I get it and normal. it's fine. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I, I, I've never been told that it was too expensive to my face. Mm -hmm. They would try to negotiate yeah. and say this and that. And I would, put my foot down and say, well, yeah. uh, you know, this is the rate that I've always charged. And um, I hope you can see Understand. where I'm coming from. Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, the rehearsals and the script, I'll be doing everything. Yeah. You've got a stable nine to five fan. Correct. What made you feel like you wanted to get out there and get them monies, oh. you know, to, to pursue so many things. You had the side hustle, you had MC gigs, you have radio, you got two little monsters you got to look oh. after at home. You got a husband as well. You know, you got to find time to hang out as a family, time for work, time to I, develop. I love how you make it sound as if like my husband is my child. I'm not... <laughs> Putting words into your mouth, babe. But, <laughs> no, but, but like, he's, he's but, my other responsibility. <laughs> but, but what made you feel, you know, you've already got a stable nine to five. And for a lot of people, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's what all that, and that's what they're content with. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. But what made you feel like, you know what, outside of this nine to five, I still want to go out there and hustle. What made you sort of uh, decide on that? Okay. First thing came to mind. I like money. Fair enough. Come on. She honest. We, I, don't we, we need money. Yeah. We need money. Okay. And what, let's break that down a little okay. bit. Why do you like money? So I think I don't want I people like, to think, oh, she's so materialistic. Yeah. You're not. No. I mean, look at how you're dressed. <laughs> You're, you're the, I Asta. mean, your bow is not even tied on your <laughs> sleeves, Faye. You know, this, this one this is, is just for like this. This is bar. the blouse that if Faye uses this to work, she'll be like, can you tie, can you yeah, tie can my tie sleeves? Because she can't tie her <laughs> own <laughs> sleeves. <laughs> okay, okay. I no, actually but, don't like it tied. Okay, okay. Okay, so um, you, we know, you know, you're not the materialistic type. Yeah. So let's break it down. Why do you like money? I like stability. Great answer. Isn't it? Yes. I, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm going to buckle myself. Like, yeah. isn't it the best answer? Uh, no. <laughs> Tadinya, um, humility. <laughs> Tadinya, you know, so. No, it's with money and that feeling of being stable and being able to provide for your family and not have to. Money is one thing that I don't want to worry about. Yeah. So if you have enough of it, then you are okay. It's one thing that you don't have to think about. Brings you a sense of comfort. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Security. Security. And you know me, I don't really, I mean, you guys try to ration <laughs> and get me to buy stuff online. I sometimes do it and sometimes I, mean, I don't. Do we, do we need to mention the table of 2021? Oh, <laughs> oh my heart breaks. <laughs> For table of 2021. Okay, so go back. Well, before we touch on that. I don't know that, why you're bringing yeah. it up. I'm sad now and depressed. So you, yeah, as much as Dini and, Dini and I love to online shop. Do. You have a lot more self-control than we do. I do. Until it came to this table, which actually you, Rachun, the Come two on. of us. We brought up the table. It's a good damn table. It's a good damn table if it arrived. <laughs> Break it down, Faye. What happened of the uh, the table fiasco Are we of 2021? To say, uh, the K word. K yes, please, please, please bring some context when you say the K word here. She's talking about Kickstarter. <laughs> Guys, it was a Kickstarter campaign. Oh, There's no other K word here. Uh, I'm so upset. Okay, go on. So I, I just want to preface. <sighs> this is the one rare moment that Faye, Rachel, and Dini, and I. Uh, and not the other way no, around. But didn't it start off as I, Dinny? Dinny and I both had the emails and we were just like, oh, check out this table. And, and that was it. It's a gorgeous table. Okay, right. Okay, so I wanted a work desk. This was at the height of COVID. A computer desk for work from home, whatever. Uh, you all right there? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My drink overflowed. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> This is the first time it's happened, Faye. That's why you're so upset about table of 2021. Oh, this stupid table. <laughs> okay, so yeah. 
height of COVID, you really wanted a table. I wanted a table. Uh, we wanted a table and we wanted a table that was adjustable. It can stand, it can go up, it can go down. Yeah. It can, you know. There was a special, a hidden power socket that you could press. Correct. That had a wireless pad what? on top. For you to charge your phone. It came with matching uh, like a riser table that sticks right on top. Wood grain. Ooh, you could even choose the shade of wood grain. Super gorgeous. The most amazing standing electronic table. We even paid extra to get the extra large table size, correct? Yes, we did. <clears throat> and then what happened? <laughs> it amounted to about 700 Brunei dollars. Including correct? shipping, including everything. Including shipping. Yeah. Which was still everything. like, that's a pretty damn good deal. It's great. Yeah. Electronic table. Because, I mean, you've seen those tables here. You It can go up and down, but it doesn't have the wireless. It doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't come as stable. Correct. And it's not aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. And then this table, and I went 700. Okay, I'm willing. I'm willing to invest. This is an investment. That's what I told myself. This is an investment. The amount of happiness and joy that this table will bring me... And obviously I went for it, used my credit card, went for it, got it. And I said, hey guys, today's the last day. I think it was a deadline, wasn't it? it? Deadline, today's the yeah. last day for you to get it for the early bird um, price. And you get um, extra All these stuff. Be benefits, Correct. the add-ons, you have like opportunities for add-ons and stuff like that. A month after, two months, yeah. after, three, four, five, four, six five. months later. But we stuck through because I thought that with Kickstarter, there wouldn't be an issue yeah. at all. I've never had a problem with Kickstarter before. Yeah, I've had maybe once. Once, that's it. Out of you like never the told 10 me different that campaigns. Before, never before we bought. Mm. It was a one out of 10. There's a 10% chance. <sighs> it never came. It never came. It still hasn't come. And Kickstarter said- I don't think said, there's anything. No. no. And Kickstarter said- they weren't able to refund any of the backers. No. Yeah. So basically what happens with Kickstarter is- Scam. <laughs> fake, fake. No, don't. Okay. Um, but what happens with Kickstarter is, I think the responsibility of getting your products delivered is in the manufacturer or the campaign owner's hands. Yes. So once the campaign ends, if it is successful, they give the money to the campaign owner. And then whatever happens after that is out of Kickstarter's it hands. It doesn't matter. <laughs> It doesn't matter. They should have, I don't know who I'm blaming at this it's good, point. It's good I am. I am because you know me, I hate losing money. Yeah. I hate not, I hate even losing $3. Okay. Do you? I do. Okay. At one point. Okay. I love use, I, you know me, I love using my card. I like to get my points and everything. And when a business tells me that, I will be getting a discount if I use cash. It upsets me because I, I want to use my card. And um, I remember we were getting, uh, I'll just say it out loud. We we're uh, getting an <clears throat> Oculus. Okay. And uh, a certain establishment wouldn't allow us to use a card and said it's cash only. And it's a $30 difference. Okay. Okay. I was in a bad mood the whole day. I wasn't even speaking to my husband. Wow. I was so upset. Took it out on him. <laughs> because he said he was okay to pay for it. Yeah. And I said, don't, you know, like you- You're not supposed to pay for the charges. No. Right? No. Yeah. I said, no, we should be there and telling them, hey, use my card and I want the cash price and you should be, you know- absorbing the charges and uh, the guy just said, no, sorry, it's cash only. And I was so upset the whole day. So upset. But you played Beat Saber or not already? I did. Worth it or not? Worth it if I got my $30 back. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's switch gears. But then yeah, $700 on a table, oh, that's, it hurts that. me. And we could have avoided that if by- The third month. The third month, we told our credit card company and say, hey, we've been scammed. Yeah. Um, please, you know, give us our money back. But we didn't. We only- I would like to blame Dini for that. Yeah. We only reached out to the banks, I think- Six months after? Six months after, and they said it was too late. And granted, I understand. It's you know. okay. So I read that already, dude. So I was already, I, I remember us when we made that order, 
just thinking, man, we should just hire an office unit just so that the three of us can have our matching you tables. You did say that. that. And it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Did we have the same wooden grain? You and Didney got the same wooden okay, grain. I went for a darker one, I think. You went for a darker yeah. one. I'm still Tequila. upset about it. I would have looked Why? nice in the middle, in between the two, you know, <clears throat> lighter grained tables. Why did you bring this up? I'm sorry. I just, oh I just, I love seeing you triggered. So upset. Uh, let's talk about something that brings you a little joy. Not as much joy as being an MC does, uh, but <laughs> but let's talk about being a radio DJ. Oh, okay, I thought you were gonna say motherhood. No, <laughs> you and I both both have the similar stance on uh, on being parents. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but how, why, when DJ go? Because I can. Um, okay, so it first started off as. Uh, I just needed a job at that time. I was fresh out of uni and um, my best friend, I'm sorry, my other best friend at the time <laughs> uh, said that there was an opening. Okay. And I thought I went for it and I said, okay, you know, and she said, well, you can talk. I said, okay, all right, I'll go for it. And I did it. And uh, believe it or not, Indra was there. Okay. He was the one who auditioned me and recorded um, my script, whatever it was. And uh, after that, they called me in. And after a while- This was Pelangi. Pelangi, correct. And, oh, we're allowed to say the P word. Okay then. Uh, <laughs> we are free agent. We are free agent, Faye. <laughs> this one already all paid for. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, it started off there and um, I thought, wow, it's pretty easy. You talk, you play music. You do stuff in between. Yeah, you can you do get, your, your little online errands in correct, between. Correct. And you get paid for this. Wow. wow. This yeah. is some uh, good gig for uh, your first job, right? <laughs> what do you think makes a good DJ fair? Because you, you've been doing this, did you say 11 years just now? Oh, 20, end of 2010. Okay. So, oh, so you've December been, you 2010. You were a little longer than, than I was. Yes. I was mid 2011 when I got back from uni. Correct. You went into Palangi first. No, Pilan. I was on- oh. oh. Zane is on Palangi? Yes. So I was in Palangi for one morning show. No, we were co-hosting together at one point or you were sitting- No, 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 you, you interviewed me because I was doing a magic show. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Or it was some talent show or some magic show. You interviewed me, yeah. We weren't co-hosting together? We weren't co-hosting. No, we only co-hosted in Crystal FM. So I came on as a guest one time but then oh, wow. uh, when I got back, I auditioned for both Crystal and Palangi. Eh, okay. Yes. And then Palangi got back to me first. Uh, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I can wait for Crystal. And then, so I, I tried it out. And then after that morning show with Zane, uh, Tina called me up that afternoon. Oh, right. And she's like, hey, you know, we heard you on air this morning. I'm like, I know, I get it. I was... You know, I was waiting Tina for you guys. To Palangi. <laughs> I was I was listening to you guys. I was waiting for you guys. I said, I just felt like I really needed the work. I needed the extra, you know, I needed to get on ASAP. Just like, okay, we still want you. Come on in like these next few days to you okay. know, be, be part of the process. I'm like, okay. So we went from there. Wow. Uh, that so really changed my I, I, memory. Yeah. I genuinely thought they were co-hosting together. No. I interviewed you. Yeah, you interviewed me. You were in a red top. And I think for the longest time- You, you still, were in a red top. Cause you still, Kidding that me? was the the profile picture for like your phone number in my contacts. Oh really? Yeah, so that's why I remember. <laughs> I, oh, I still wow. might be, let me check. Oh my God. It still might be Faye. Munkin, Munkin. Look at you. Uh, Yeah, dude, see, red. Oh my God. Look at me in my, my like geeky glasses. I had a magician's t-shirt on. Were we on. hugging? Can I see? Yeah, we were hugging. For real? That was my first time meeting you. And I hugged you? <sighs> I have that effect on women. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm so surprised by this. It's like you like to be <laughs> <I'm so laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, so that's 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 our, our history uh, okay. of being on air together. Wow. Yeah. So um, wow, wow, what wow. what do you think? You know, you've been on air since end of two thousand ten. Mm -hmm. So what do you think makes a good DJ? Honestly, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I have no because I think it is very subjective. Correct. 
who you like, what you like, um, what you like to listen to, who you like to listen to. I know that I think if you want to make it very generic, like super general of what you think makes a good DJ is to know what you're talking about, um, but also be able to think on your feet. Um, but also at the same time, be very interesting. I think just sound interesting or whatever you're talking about, just sound like you love it, even though you don't. I don't like, know. It sounds like you've been a DJ for like 12 years or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. Uh, as a radio DJ, you know, I think people know your signature. Hey, my name's hey. DJ Faye. Yeah. You know, um, how do you stay upbeat? How do you stay cheery all the time? <laughs> like in life or on radio? Do you get, do people make that assumption about you? Cause I feel, I get that a lot. I get oh. that a lot where I'm like, how do you stay so energetic? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm energetic that one minute we're on air. After that, I'm, 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 I'm chilling. I'm having my coffee. Dude, uh, it is so true. I mean, we've, we've talked about this before. And, uh, when I saw that question and you know, how, how do you stay cheery? You know, me, you've seen me, you've seen me at six o'clock in the morning before my morning coffee. Yeah. And I am not the most cheery. If you want to describe Faye, happiness is not how you do joy, cheerful. I'm not, I'm just not, not a morning person. I am not a morning person. Um, not even in general, like in the afternoons, I, you don't just see me like, Hey everybody. I can be when I want to switch that, switch that switch. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's, not, not, it's not being fake. It's just, um, you know how to get into that mode. Correct. Yeah. So, cause Correct. some people might misunderstand it as being fake. Right. Um, but for you, I know it's, it's a switch. Mm -hmm. uh, I also feel, Hey, I'm providing a service here. I'm working, I am paid to be entertaining on air. Right. And no one's going to want to hear about my sad day. No Correct. one's going to want to hear me being a grumpy moo moo on yeah. air. Yeah. You know, so, Hey, if, if I'm getting paid and people are giving me minutes of their day, their attention span for first few minutes, just to listen to me on air. I'm going to try my best to, to bring some value to them. Agreed. And I am the same, but also even I think generally in life off air, we're, we're not very smiley and happy all the time. If you see me, honestly, like if you see me at a shop or at the mall, just outside in public. Probably on meds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna go. Yeah. Yeah. What's the guy? Uh, it's just, I have the RBF. You have the RBF? Do you have an RBF? Does he I have think an RBF? I have, a, I have a resting working face. Like when I'm, when I'm really, Concentrating on a work thing, I Ooh. will have a resting working face. Correct. Sometimes people translate my face as I'm I'm angry with them yeah. or I'm unimpressed. <laughs> Christian, your husband. <laughs> but, but honestly, I'm thinking a lot. I'm I've got a to-do list in my head Dude, and I'm, that I'm translates on my face. Because I'm just constantly thinking, what else do I have to do? Huh? I don't need to write down a list. I've got it all in my head. And then all of a sudden I'm like, what was I supposed so, to remember? So, so, yeah. yeah. So I'm doing that while I'm walking, I'm, I'm going to the bank. And when someone's talking to me, sometimes I feel so bad because I'm just like, oh, all right. Okay. You, th like they're interrupting, but they're not interrupting. They're interrupting my thoughts that I was having in my head. So I apologize. If you ever see me in public and I have that face on, I apologize. In your opinion. Okay. I, I can I can only speak for myself. First time now. First time, first okay. time. So I just hit the mic there. Uh, <laughs> in your opinion, can someone make a living by being a radio DJ in Brunei? Can someone make a living by being a radio? No. Why is that? I don't think it pays enough. Mm. Is that okay to say? Yeah, I think so. Um. But then again, we do have um, part-timers who are doing it sort of just that, yeah. right? And they're okay. They're doing okay. Yeah. But they're also doing other things on the side, right? Not all of them, are they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. Um, I think where I'm trying to lead to. Okay. I was, I was trying to guide you, but you know, you obviously were <laughs> terrible. Um, I think... 
a lot of people think you can make a lot of money doing just being a radio DJ. Oh yeah. When in reality, I think most of the income comes from opportunities outside of the radio station. Correct. Yeah. That's uh, is that something you, you would agree with? Yes. Uh, okay. I, I can't say for anybody. Yeah. Um, I can't speak for anybody. Uh, because I have a day job. Of course. Yes. So that for me is stable enough on its own and I can make a living out of that. And I am okay with that. I am happy without my radio job or my MC gigs. I'm okay with my day job. But if I were to take my day job out of the equation and I'm just doing MC gigs and radio. Difficult. Very difficult for me. Like I told you before, for me, the main thing in my life is stability. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people do it. You do it. You hustle from here to there and, and do it like every hour you're hustling. And I am very, very scared to take that leap to just sort of, okay, um, day to day, I have no idea what I'm doing. What am I doing today? What am I doing tomorrow? What am I doing next month? I can't, I, I, I don't know how to do it. So for me, I would say it's not enough to just sort of do MC gigs and radio. Okay. I'm fair. I need a day job. Yeah. Because I, I think a lot of people will assume like, so now I hear your job, I bet you get paid a lot just to talk on a mic. You know I what mean, I mean? I yeah. mean, you know, relatively, I suppose, I suppose. Um, but yeah, even with MC gigs, it's just, uh, it's not all the time. Mm -hmm. And there are now more MCs coming up. For sure. Um, and uh, New Blood, we've talked about this before, like not here, but you know, there's, there's more, there are more people coming in and obviously they're going to charge lower and obviously they're going to go for those younger blood and it's very difficult. And it's that sense of, oh my goodness, am I going to get an MC gig this month? Am I, be, am I going to be able to, you know, pay my insurance this month? I can't, I don't know. Yeah. With all these things that you've got going on, the day job, the business, the side hustle, the radio, the gigs, the social media stuff, how do you juggle all that while being a mom at the same time? Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi. Now we talk about the parenting stuff. Oi, oi, oi. How do you, how do you juggle that time to make sure that you're also present, make sure that you're there with the kids as well? You know what? Something that I regret not mentioning in the last podcast that I was in, because mm. we touched- Facts of life. Correct. Shout out Zed Peace. Because uh, we talked about motherhood quite a lot. And it was something that I wanted to mention, but for some reason I forgot to mention it. Uh, a helper. I have yeah. Lani. Yeah. And- She's a, she's an, she's a oh godsend, huh? Goodness. Good. You struck gold with that the one. Best. Yeah. And without her, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. Like she is the reason for my sanity, really. Um, and just, you know, I feel like she is, if I could clone myself and, and have another person, it would be Lani, but Lani's just better. <laughs> In terms of just doing everything. So she is my extra, extra limbs. And she's- She's your right hand person. Oh my goodness, yeah. So without her, I wouldn't be able to do it. So when when we were talking about juggling all of this, the work and motherhood, it is mostly Lani. And I'm going to admit that right now. Because from the very beginning, I feel a lot of moms feel, okay, you know, I'm going to be a good mom. And a good mom means I'm going to bathe my kid. I'm going to be the one to cook all these meals and feed my children. Nutritious Correct. meals, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, dude. My I definition that, yeah. of a good mom or my definition of just being a mom in general is to read to my kids, um, to make sure that they understand that I am their mom and I love them unconditionally. And I think that's it. So with Lani being there, she takes a chunk of that motherhood in terms of bathing the children, feeding the children, cooking for the kids, 
cleaning the house, making sure they are rested, making sure they are dressed, uh, you know, making sure they don't poop in their pants, all of that, that's her. I still need reminders for that. (laughs) (laughs) But I take what I believe is the core of of my belief in motherhood, which is reading to my children and making sure that, you know, I hug them and I kiss them and I tell them I love them and have a conversation with them, which I think is more important than anything. And uh, yeah, that. Yeah, I think, I think everyone has their, their definitions and mine, mine, mine definitely align. Um, I think for me, being a parent, my ultimate goal is to just make sure my son doesn't grow up to be a supervillain. Ah, like just well, that's a very good way of saying it because I've told Yaya about this. I just don't want him to grow up to be an uh, ant. Yes. Yes. Can I just say it? An so ant I'm hill. Gonna... <laughs> and ant hill. And ant yeah. hill. Bleep. Yeah. I mean, that's my ultimate goal as a parent. Ob- obviously, it's to protect, it's to provide opportunity where I can or when mm-hmm, I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, but ultimately I want to make sure he grows up to be a decent human being. Correct. Yeah. And I know it sounds like we might just be doing the bare minimum, uh, but to make sure that they grow up to be decent human beings, oh my goodness, it takes a lot. Yeah. And there's so many times that you get frustrated um, and you, okay, I mean, we spoke about this. We, before you became a parent and I became a parent first and Dini became a parent first. And we talked about this, of how this is the kind of parenting that we're going to go for. Can I just break that down go real on. quick? Because I remember I was, I was sitting in between the two of you guys were like, yeah, we don't, we never say no to our kids. That's we don't exactly say the how word, we sound like. We don't say the word no. And I'm like, wow, really guys? Like, yeah, because no has these, like, you know, Diddy was at whatever he learned somewhere. Was, this was, this was probably six months yeah. into parenthood. And then okay. uh, I only just recently found out you both have two kids now. And then I was like, hey, do you guys remember that time when you guys said this and this and this? We're like, yeah, that only lasted three months now. Yes. So I'll just be honest <laughs> with you. I'm like, these pretentious truckers. <laughs> it's so hard. It's, I mean, there's that conditioning that we had before where our parents used to say, you know, like, no, uh, because, uh, 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 you know, there's, there's really at this time, At this point, there's no time for me to describe, hey, you can't have that now, Mm. but you can have it later because right now it is dinner. I saw this this TikTok just now and this mom was recording herself and the kid was in the background just playing with the light switch. Mm. And she's like, you know, uh, I, I used to say no, but instead I, and then someone else switches. Now I say, try it again. Go on, I dare you. Try it again. Try it again. <laughs> try it again. <laughs> and I'm, I'm that parent. Oh, because sometimes it's just effective. Yeah, it is. It, it is. is. It is. It is. As, uh, as Please don't scare Anasa. Huh? Our friend oh over here God, is expecting I, in a few weeks. Huh? I mean, I mean, go for the parent. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I think one of the tips that you you told me mm-hmm. before Amar came to this world. Yes. Uh, was trust your parent gut. Did I? Just, I? Or wow. maybe it was Dinny. It was <laughs> it either you or Dinny. Like it was me. either it was either you or Dinny, and you're okay. like, just. Oh, actually, it wasn't you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I remember who that, it was. It was my buddy head. Kevin, okay. and he was like, just trust your instincts. I think as a parent, you're gonna hear all sorts of things, left, right, center, from from people you trust, people people you don't know, people you do know, people you look up to, people that you don't look up to, and just there are times where you just need to trust your instinct as a parent. And I'm like, oh, okay. I agree with that, but also at the same time, I believe we should constantly educate ourselves. Oh, for sure. In how to parent. Yeah, I, like, mean, I mean, I'm not saying like, you know what? Licking that electricity socket seems all right. I mean, it's not turned on. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Of course, yes. Do of course. it. You Please, know? yes, educate la. Obviously, educate <laughs> la. I mean, we should educate. There are, I, I follow a lot of. Uh, uh, parenting yeah. guidance on social media. Yeah, I always see you repost like the ones that, that you relate to or the ones that you you feel like can bring value. And I'm exactly. like, there she is on her high horse again. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to remind myself. Correct, I feel, yeah, I get I it, I feel man, I get like it. I need to remind myself. It's, I get frustrated a lot. This is, you know, my, I've, I've got a temper. 
Um, and with, with the workload that I have, which I've brought upon on myself, by the way, and I get home and you're tired and you are just stressed out. There's no time for me to just tell my kid and, and discipline the way you want to, you want to the ideal scenario in your head. Correct. I don't just want to go, okay, take a deep breath and say, well, all right, (laughs) I see where you're coming from. You know, I can say that to Ethan. He's five, but but sometimes for Ethar, who's a two year old and say, Ethar, I can't No. Yeah. Sometimes just the face works, right? Oh my God. The way you look at them. Oh yeah. Can you look at the camera like that face? Yeah. Yeah. Or sometimes it's the hasta. Oh. Banar. (laughs) So, I mean, uh, I feel, I feel so bad sometimes, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people relate to this. And uh, if you don't, all right. Um, but I- <laughs> why are you pointing to Yaya? Why, why were no, you pointing like, to Yaya when you said that? I was looking at the camera. But sometimes when there's a behavior that I disapprove of, I just go. Oh, so he face. knows. Ethar knows. Um, Ethar's your youngest. Oh, no. Ethar at this point. Doesn't know. He has no, I don't know. He just can't seem to get it. But Ethan knows? Ethan knows. Oh. He sees it and he goes, oh, I'm sorry, mama. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, mama. You better be. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. on that note, mm. do you ever suffer from, you know, we've heard it for uh, some people do mom guilt. There's mom guilt. I have dad guilt sometimes. Mm. Do you suffer from mom guilt? Or have you ever seen Quite, uh, there are a few times that I do feel that. And like I told you, I think we bring this on ourselves. I mean, I told you, I can, I can survive with just a day job. And then after I come back from my day job, I can spend time with the children. But no, I decide to do radio or I decide to take up an MC gig or I, I decide to do something else. And... There are times when Ethan, uh, who's very vocal about things, and he would say, you know, you don't spend enough time with me. That's or, a tough one to swallow, huh? Correct. And, or sometimes he would say to, uh, to his dad and go, you know, you never play games with me anymore. But then you take it in and you look at him and you go, baby, I just spent 30 minutes with you playing this, but it's never enough. For sure. And here's the thing about children. It is never enough. They want you 24 seven if they could. They also know they've got you wrapped around their finger. Hi, they bit, right? do. I they swear, do. Like, I, would, I would do backflips if I could for Omar. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and he yeah. knows it. He exactly. knows it. So it's the mom guilt <clears throat> at first, obviously. And um, when, when Ethan says like, oh, do you have to work again? Really, you and just sometimes yeah. they're just saying it for the sake of saying it. They right? are. Yeah, it's they not are. a it's not an attack. It's yeah. not a, a, a stab at things. It's just I just want a reaction. I just want to see Correct. my mom react. So after a while, I realized, okay, well, I I can take you know uh, myself out of doing radio at that time and spend time with you, but. <sighs> I don't know. It's just, it fulfills me to, to do, do the work well. and come home to you and spend time with you as well. And also know that yeah. all these other things you're doing helps provide for them as well. Right? I agree. It brings extra security. Exactly. Extra S- money. Comfort, okay, a little just bit money. stability. <laughs> extra money. Extra money. Extra money. And uh, I don't know. I, sometimes I worry that it's something that is in Ethan's head, you know, say, oh, you know, mama used to work a lot. She works all the time. She never has time for me. Yeah. And I'm so worried that in 10 years time, that that is a thing that he's going to say. And I've always tried to have a conversation with him about it. And I don't know if it's. Hey man, I've, I've seen you parent and I, 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 I definitely, uh, you know, take, take, you know, pages out of your book sometimes when I see how you parent and stuff like that. So I, I just want you to know, I think you're doing a good job. Give me an example of how I parent. Okay. That you seem to like. I really think that the fact that you 
make sure that you read to them every day. Okay. That was something I took on as well. Okay. I made sure that I tried to, I tried to make, sh- make it a routine to read to Amar every night. Mm. Obviously on nights like this, he's, he's doing it, you know, mom's reading to him now. So right, I'm, yeah. you know, but then when I can, uh, I will read to him. Okay. I, yeah. So okay. that's, that's one of the things. And I really feel that's a, that's a core memory I want him to have. Okay. Good. Growing yeah. up, I want him to remember that we read together and because when he gets older, I want to start reading Harry Potter to him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I really want to, like, I, I really felt like I, I learned a lot from books. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want him to, you know, experience all that stuff as well. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. yeah so that's yeah. one of the things. Okay. Um, you guys do dedicated movie nights, which I thought was really cool. Ooh. I think it's just... Yeah. I'll give you uh, sometimes... Here's the thing. Sometimes the truth comes the out. The truth comes out. So when you say, okay, you know, you you like the way that I parent when um, the idea of me reading to my kids, sometimes it gets very frustrating. Oh, no, no. I, I, I get frustrated as well. Correct. I'm not saying it's the easiest exactly. job in the world. I'm not, I don't want to give people false the impression, impression. Yeah. that, oh my gosh, I read to my kids. We're cuddling in bed with a no. blanket. Sometimes they're running around screaming oh, while I'm reading. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Now with two kids, they're hitting each other. I have to read five books or six because you have to be equal. Um, and that's take notes, huh? Oh my goodness. And, and I, I'm reading and they're talking and they're fighting or they're doing something else. And I'm like, are you listening? Because I remember I asked you this, you know, I said, Amar just runs around. Like at one point he was so trana. As soon as he changes into his PJs, he'll get down onto the bed, we'll, we'll read the book, and he's out like a light. Correct. And I think a couple months later, then he started running around reading. I told you this, and you're like, just read, man. Just read you it. have to force <laughs> the procedure. You have to force the routine. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. So, I've, I've had, uh, yeah, so when they do that, I just read louder. Yeah. yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. or I'm screaming at the top of my lungs and I'm going. MC behind. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, puff, puff, chug, chug. Are you listening? One pop, two pop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guys, the train. Do you see the train? The yeah. train is cut. So you have to be more animated. And it's um, an advice that I give to, to a lot of parents because they're, they're always asking me, how do you get your kids to love reading or to enjoy it? And I'm like, whoa. It's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. So it's a lot of frustration that gets into reading. It's not all happy. Um, and movie nights. That's also another wrestling fest, right? Okay. Okay. Let's, 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 let's stop it right there. Okay. All right. All right. I, I let you relax a little bit. Okay. Go, 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 go. A lot of people use the excuse that having a nine to five mm-hmm. prevents them or makes it difficult for them to pursue something or to develop something. Okay. Uh, you know, you're, you know, I was speaking to Azhar or Jay from Chaps and Rebels. You know, I've been speaking to you and you guys are all prime examples that that shouldn't be a case. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What, what are your thoughts on, on that? Hmm. Look, I think that it's not just effort. I think it is, oh, it's going to make gonna me sound me a, like, no, You're going to give me a cliche gonna, line, aren't no, you? No, it's going to make me sound like a douche, but I think a, <laughs> a lot of it is, is talent, Don't you think so? If you know that you have that talent and you have that drive and not everybody has that talent or drive, then they can't do it. I know a lot of people. I know, I know a lot of people who've asked me and say, oh, Faye, you know, how do you do it? How do you stay on top of things and okay say you say you do have talent lah. Huh? let's let's obviously say you do no have no no talent. i mean this, this person in this okay. situation say okay. that person does have the talent okay right uh you know they're you know they've they've maybe handcrafted a product that they can that that's like oh you should really sell this and All then right. they'd be like oh i can't um because of my nine to five i just don't know then I, I call bull yeah, that's where I was going. That's the, the right. direction I'm coming from. Yes, because yeah, I t- yeah, not not if they don't have the talent, because then that's that's extra difficult. That's yeah. like playing then, it on expert level. I mean, now it's an excuse. Yeah. If you have it and you can do it, why not? I was talking to Kong yesterday from Happy Cream, mm. and it's called a side hustle for a reason. 
Oh, yeah. I want people to know like, yes, I know you have your nine to five. I know that brings you stability. Doesn't mean to pursue a passion, pursue a dream. You don't have to quit your nine to five. Agreed. Yeah. There, Kong said there are 24 hours in a day. Mm-hmm. Nine to five, you know, could be your day job. But from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., that's when you can build and develop your side hustle. Let me play devil's advocate here. Ooh, okay. Okay, I agree with that. Okay, okay. Um, there are 24 hours in a day, but how a person goes through 24 hours in a day, all of us do it differently. Oh, for sure. And also way different now that we have kids. I'm, 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 Correct. I'm, I'm coming from the perspective where I remember it was easier for me to get my side hustle going on before I was even in a relationship, before I was married, mm. before I had a kid. Yes. Uh, definitely uh, easier then than it would be now. Agreed. But I still feel you could put some time in. I still feel like from a regular nine to five, I, I think me, I can only speak for myself. Yeah. I think I would still be able to put in an hour or two to move a project forward. You know? And and you are doing it. Hmm. You are doing it. And I do it too. But I think there, I don't know. I don't know. I think there are a lot of people who are doing nine to five, but the thoughts the things that they are thinking about and whatever is happening up here is just taking up so much of Mm. their time. So that 24 hours, you know, like this person could just be sitting there for an hour and you're thinking this person isn't doing anything and you're wasting an hour, but there's so much going on in an hour because there's so much going on in their heads. Fair enough. Maybe they're traumatized about something yeah. I don't know um yeah so it's it goes back to saying not everybody has the same 24, 24 hours. hours okay fair enough okay. in a day agree to disagree uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding I'm kidding I get it and 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 yeah you're right you're right yeah but uh yeah but I but also I think it's just because I'm I'm feel I'm it's, it's empathy towards yeah. a lot of people who want to do these things um, and they have the talent for it. But at the same time, there's so many things that are stopping them from doing it because of a, I don't know, past trauma yeah. or uh, somebody telling them that they're not good enough or no one's telling them that they're good enough yeah. um, and all of that. But Did you ever go through all that? Oh. I had so many people tell me that You're not I would good never enough? make it uh, after I quit Taib. Uh, what? Yeah, so many people were like, Oof, "Are you sure? I, I don't think you should." When I when I when I told people that I was going to quit my day job to be a magician, to be a coach, to be a radio DJ, so many people said that I would fail, and uh, that was what drove me. So I think that's where I was different than some of the people. Was I used that as you know what? Let me let me show you. Right. Let me show you that I can make a living. But then I also was realistic. I gave myself six months. Correct. If it worked out, it worked out. If it didn't, uh, I have my degree and my work experience to fall back on. So, yeah. So I, I definitely had a lot of that, you know. But why did you quit your day job? Because I didn't want to be that guy five years from now sitting at the same desk wondering what would happen if oh, yeah. I didn't pursue being a magician. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. once I quit, I think within within the first few months, I had opportunities to travel as a coach to Penang. I was competing CrossFit in other countries. Yeah. I had other opportunities through radio. I tried different gigs, you know. So, yeah, there were definitely some tough times, but yeah, I I, I wouldn't change it for anything. I think so many people just doubted me mm. um, that. And I think it also depends whether or not you love your nine to five. For sure. For sure. I think, uh, yeah. I think one thing Azhar said Mm. when he was trying to pursue the whole barbering thing, he just wanted to open up a barbershop. That was his goal. Not to be a barber, just to open up a barbershop where he could get a good haircut and all that stuff. He said, when you can't stop thinking about something, that's the thing you need to pursue. Like, oh, wow. When you can't stop thinking day in, day out, every free time, you just can't stop thinking about this. That's when you need to, that's, that's when you need to make a move. You don't want to regret it a couple of years down the line. If you have the, the resources to pull it off, if you have, you know, the chance to pull it off and you can't stop thinking about it, do it. It's so like he corporate. was, yeah, at that time he had two kids already. He was, he was working in the corporate life. 
Uh, and yeah, that's when. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. I, it's, um, it's different for everyone. It, I correct. I yeah. I think for me, I'm so set on hey man, you can't use time as an excuse. So I, but when you say things like this, I understand now. Mm. Uh, a little bit more, a mm. little bit more empathy. Yeah. Because I just feel there's so many potential. There's so much talent in Brunei and I just want people to get out there and just show what Brunei has to offer. You know what I mean? Yes, but also at the same time, they have to know it. Yeah. They have to know it. There yeah. is no way that I can push i mean i i can i can stroke their ego yeah. i can macam tadi ba macam tadi humility humility i get it i, I mean, get it humility. i can i can tell them that they're doing amazing and i think they're great for this and they're great for that whatever but yeah they have to want it yeah yeah fair enough and i think that's a common thread with everyone that's been on the podcast so far i think mm-hmm. people sort of knew what they wanted and how they wanted to get there yes So you have a nine to five, you have radio, you have uh, social media, you know, all that stuff. You still decided, I want to make my life difficult. I, I, want, yeah, to, I, do. I want to jump into business. I know. So you, you had a business. I had a business. Which only you recently uh, Let go on. of, yes. So um, the business was called Heaven Sent. Uh, is still called uh, wordplay S C E N T. Correct, not heaven S-E-N-T. sent. Because it's a candle business. Correct. It is something that I, I when I like a product and I thought, oh, okay, I like it so much that I bought so much of it. Sekali lagi nasa. Anarta. So loud he sit down. <laughs> so loud. <laughs> Buringka. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so I started to. Uh, Heaven Scent because I like the product from Doplo Sense, which was a which is a company from Malaysia, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, because at that time it was COVID, and I wanted to light up candles. I like working from home. I want to set an ambiance and yeah. all of that, and um, yeah, I like the product. And I actually approached the company in Malaysia and see if I could sell it in Brunei. That's how much you liked it, huh? I loved it so much. I thought it was spot on, the packaging. And I didn't I didn't want to start something from scratch. And this is a good Base. start for me to dabble in business. And uh, then uh, this person said, uh, this, this company said, oh, actually there's somebody in Brunei who's already doing it and you can reach out to this person. And turns out it was a friend of mine. Well, somebody I met at a, an event who is a friend, a mutual friend of a friend. And uh, we were like, okay, you know, and uh, I said, okay, are, are you doing this? And said, yeah, I want to do this. And I said, okay, I want to do it too. And uh, we started it. So it is actually his thing. And because I didn't want to manage things because I have so many things to do. I just wanted to sell. And also I wanted to get the product at a very cheap price because you know me. And yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's really the main reason why. I just want, so I want retail punya. I want to save price. money. And uh, yeah, and then I started doing that. It, uh, I got about it like a thousand a month just from profit. Really? Like, it's crazy. Wow. It is crazy how much people love candles, but yeah. it was only around at that time because, you know, it was, it was the height of COVID, you know, people like to online shop and you wanted to get in there yeah. and uh, corner the market, corner the market. But I still believe in the product. I think it's great. I still light up candles um, and uh, melt some wax and release aroma. And uh, yeah, but It took a, a toll, I suppose, on after COVID was done and I had MC gigs and then I had to pack, you know, candles and everything. My goodness, it was, it was too much. It was too much. So your two cents <laughs> <laughs> on it. <laughs> With a C. <laughs> what did you... What did you learn from starting a business? Because this is different, right? This mm. is not a skill-based thing anymore. This is, no. this is not an MC gig. This is not being a radio DJ. This is not your nine to five, which your degree might have prepared you for. Mm-hmm. But now you're starting a business. What did you learn from starting a business? Hmm. It's... Oh. 
It's communicating with with uh, customers. I think is is very difficult to to market in such a way that people understand from the get go that this is what you're selling and how to use it. Oh my goodness, I feel when you're when you have a business, it's very difficult to do it on your own. You actually do need a team. I'm so glad that I wasn't the one the one. Speaking yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow, England. <laughs> Your England so hundred. I come from Cardiff. Um, I was the one that I wasn't the one to start the whole business thing. And you can actually see it because it's very difficult to get the product in to uh, to make sure that you know all the permits are I can I can't do any of that. So all that I had to do was to have these things and market it. I like the marketing part. Okay. I don't like the selling part. Oh, do you okay. understand what yeah. I mean? So you like promoting it on Instagram, I for do. example. Correct. To promote it on Instagram, but you're not a fan of actually having to make the deliveries, to close the sale, to make sure the payments go through, all the other stuff that goes on behind It was the a revelation for me. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, every... When we were kids, I'm pretty sure that we had that, you want to be a cashier. Yeah. I think that was one of my first, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? A cashier. Do you know you, what I wanted to be when I grew what? up? <laughs> so Go I remember I was, I, was uh, I was, I think six or seven years old in the UK. Because, you know, London's. Oh, uh, he's No, I stay in Lancaster, Lancaster. <laughs> um, and Yaya knows the story. Um, and I remember... I would wake up every morning at about six in the morning. I'm intrigued. I was so excited. I was so, oh, I ran, I ran to the, to the, to the front of the house. I, I just, I just sat there looking out the window and every day they would come and I was like, wow, I really, I, like I, I really want to be this when I grow up. And I just wanted to be a garbage collector so <laughs> bad. I was Ray. thinking of postman. Oh, no, Ray. Why? Being a six or seven year old, I remember telling my parents that this was her shock then. But I was like, oh, I want to be a garbage collector when I grow up. I think it was just seeing them with a the big truck, seeing them just hang on the side. It was just... It was just such an amazing thing for me. And I was like, that's what I want to be when I grow up. The things that go through- A boy's mind. <laughs> our heads, I feel. Cause you know what Ethan wants to be when he- The first thing he said was, I want to be a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey man, uh, uh, you raised, you raised- no, I mean, I, mean I, I want to support your decision. <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> And I said, you mean you want to make pizzas for a living? He says, no, mama, I want to be a pizza. Oh. You can eat me. Ow. How and old I'm was like, he? Oh, oh, he was three. <laughs> <laughs> he was three. Okay, was the la. first time, yeah, the first time I asked him, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's not yeah. generic. Like, I want to be a doctor or a teacher or anything. I just want to be a pizza. So for you, you wanted to be a cashier or you didn't like being the cashier playing? No, because, you know, when you were a kid, you want to... It was, yeah. it was fun. You get to press buttons. It was better than being a garbage collector. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, I still think it's pretty cool. My son loves watching the garbage collector Correct. collect our trash. It's like holding, oh my gosh. And you're, um, I know it is. Uh, sorry, Anas. And uh, you're holding money and uh, you get to teet. Yeah, and scan just it. Like, yeah. And bag it. Oh my goodness. That was fun. And Bagging I think it, it is like real world Tetris. Correct. That's your jam. And I like organizing it. And um, I think my sister has the same uh, career. I, I don't know why we love it. I, I think we go to Waho far too much. Yeah. Uh, but also, yeah, where were we going with this? What were uh, we saying? <laughs> so what did you learn? I got sidetracked. What did you learn? With the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, right. What did you learn from starting a business? <laughs> so that was... <laughs> <laughs> and you said you love the marketing part, but you don't like the selling part. So, yeah, so it then was we a talked revelation. about your, your job as yeah, a kid. Correct. Yeah. So because when you're a cashier, you don't really have to like talk to people and go, oh, this is how much this is. And uh, so this is how you do it. And this is how you, yeah. <laughs> so it was that. And I felt like I didn't have the time. All yeah. right. <laughs> like, I didn't have the time to, to, kind of have a conversation or, or tell them how to use it and, and whatnot. So I realized that I like, 
you know, getting the money out of it, but also the marketing part was, was more exciting for me. Okay. Yeah. Would I do it again? I need a team. So that's where my next question was going to go. If you had to start this all over again, what would you have done differently? Oh, oh. Not a team? A team. Definitely. I I would like to invest in it Mm. and have people. Would you still want to run it? it? Would I run? No. At at this point, not really, just because I have so many things going on. If I didn't have uh, MC gigs or if I didn't have three jobs, then uh, probably. So, Probably. So if you were to do this all over again, you'd have waited if it was a more established business and you'd end up coming in as an investor with some sort of passive income coming out of it. Correct. Okay. I like passive income. Yeah. Don't you? If, if I could get some passive income, <laughs> I would love some. some I would the definitely. Best. Love. You don't but have to the do whole anything. team thing, I think, is an important thing as well because I think um, early on in my career, especially when it came to social media, uh, I was trying to do everything myself. Yeah. Then I started working with Dan. Oh yeah. Then I realized like, okay, I, there is no point in me. Cause I can, yeah, I can edit a video in four hours and it's terrible mm-hmm. or Dan, I can pay Dan to do it. Yes. Uh, and it'll turn out amazing in a fraction of the time. Yeah. So I think that's where I think finding your tribe is really important. Finding your crew is oh, finally yeah. important. It's really important. Um, so I know like I, I trust Anas as our videographer. I trust Dan as our, you know, our director, you know, Yaya's our producer. There's a sound guy, you know, we work with, there's a gaffer we work with, and this is the essential crew, you know, and, and Dan and I come up with the content together. You know, I'm the guy that likes to make the pitch and creates the content. So like, I know where my strengths are, mm-hmm. but I also know where my weaknesses are. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think that's really important why you should have a team. Um, if you're trying to pursue something of that nature or that size or- I agree. I think, I mean, it's easy for us to say, I can do this by myself and profit a lot of the money. And, you know, we like money, Yeah. but it is very, very important to not feel burnt out. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I think you shouldn't look at like when you're spending or when you're paying your crew or Mm -hmm. your team, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not an expense. It's an investment it in your product. It is an investment, correct. And I your agree. quality. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool, man. Um, yeah. Faye. Yes. Right now, it's a prime example. You always look so confident, so put together. Do I? How much of it? Because <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> Do I? I? I know, you know, what you're really like, you know, and mm-hmm. um, how much of it is real and how much of it is a mask? Uh, the confidence? The confidence to put together. Cause I know you take you you take time to make yourself look good. Okay. Yeah, and I I, I recognize that. Like, you know, Faye always looks presentable, Faye always looks good. Oh my god, really? Yeah, I I I, I recognize that. Okay. So uh, how much of it, you know, the looking good, the looking confident part is is real? And how much of it is a facade? Um <clears throat> Oh, half and half, it's not even half. I <laughs> I sound like a douche if I say I'm a pretty confident person. Um, but then again, it does come with experience. Like you've, we've done this for a while. I've been a radio DJ. People start to recognize and whatever. Um, and I do feel confident about, the things that I do and people recognizing it. Am I, am I being fake? What am I being fake about? A facade? No, I'm, 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 I'm a pretty confident person. I okay. think I'm okay. Um, but there are times, oh. Cause I think my crew, like when I work with Anas, when I work with Yaya, I think they've seen me where I'm at my lowest, <clears throat> but I really feel there are moments where I'm, I'm really good at putting a mask on. Right. Okay. Yeah. In that sense. Yeah. Because right. I, obviously if I'm, if I'm having a grumpy day, if I'm having a really grumpy mood and I bump into someone mm. and be like, Hey, you're, you're Nasri from radio, right? I'm obviously not going to be the, yeah, yeah. I am Nasri from the radio. <laughs> I'm having a bad day. No, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I feel that I'm pretty darn good at putting a mask on 
you know, when I need to, only because I don't want to, I don't want to crap on this person's day by me being, you know, a grumpy moo moo. Correct. Yeah. It depends on the situation. There are days when I would catch myself. I'm very, I'm very cautious. Yeah. Aware. Aware and uh, of of how I behave around certain people, and or just in public. Just in public. Yeah. I so you know you're a total mess at home. <laughs> <laughs> I am a total mess at home. Um, <laughs> no, but when I'm when I'm out, uh, I don't go out thinking everybody's going to recognize me. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't. There I don't is no well. way I would say, you know, um, <laughs> let me give you an example. Sometimes I'm pretty confident that people do recognize me as DJ Faye, right? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes like, oh, you know, cause sometimes people are smiling and they're like, and then they would say, it's like, uh, um, then he, eh, kita DJ kan? Yeah. So I said, okay, yes, yes, I am. Okay. And, <laughs> and, then, and then there are days when I'm just sort of, you know, like seeing somebody who's smiling at me and I'm like, oh, I know it. They're going to come up to me. They're, they're going to come up to me. to me and say, are you DJ Faye? Uh, but no, they come up to me and they go like, eh, bini at fun again? <laughs> Ilang confident that is fair. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes, yes I am. So um, that's why I don't go out thinking everybody's going to recognize me. I don't feel like I'm there yet. It goes back to humility. I. It's not insecurity. Is it insecurity? I don't know. I don't think that I am really bad, but I don't think that I am the best. I feel like there are people who are much better. Even when you called me in to be part of this podcast and be one of your guests in my head, I went, are there no other people that he can talk to? No, like, I just, I just want people to know like, wow, he really gives a shot to everyone. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So it was, it was just at that time I'm, I'm thinking, oh, you know, like why would he pull me in for the first season? I just, I just thought it was weird. But yeah, so I don't know if that is confidence or it's a tough, right? Yeah. Because then like, why would he pull me in for the first season? Then now it, I'm just, this is devil's advocate here. Mm. Now I'm thinking like, oh. Why did doesn't I put she, her in? Doesn't she believe in my, my sort of- my Oh no, but it could, yes, it could, yes, there could yes. be a misunderstanding there. Correct. You know what I mean? Yes. So yeah, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's gray. It's a gray area. Yeah. yeah it's here nor there. Correct. But, uh, but yeah, and what's important is I think people talk about it. So no things get mis, uh, you know, misunderstood. Correct, correct. With all the things that you've done, Faye, mm -hmm. mom, wife, mm -hmm. Business owner. Uh, oh, we need to just quick update. Heaven sent, not yours anymore. Not mine anymore. You've sold your shares off. Correct. Okay. Sold my shares. Because I don't want people to listen and be like, eh, ku support DJ Fair. <laughs> you know? Be like, but Surprise, please support. Nazri punya. <laughs> you know? so, so, you know, business owner, radio DJ, MC, uh, social media, wizard, you know, all this stuff. Wizard? Do you ever have moments where you... Will you question the steps or decisions you make? Do you ever have moments where you feel a little like a like an imposter or if you ever, do you actually belong where you are? The imposter syndrome. Oh, my guys. If you were to ask me 10 years ago, when I was 15. <laughs> Why you laugh, Yaya? <laughs> Why you laugh? laugh? What are you trying to say? What is she saying? Yeah, she doesn't believe I, it. My producer in it. Producing jokes on the side. Like 10 years ago, you were 16. Ah. Gun. I don't know lah. Maybe, yeah. yeah, yeah. 10 years ago, she was 32. I don't know. <laughs> so, so and, That's why and she's And then this is the exact reason why your episode never airs. <laughs> <laughs> she, she produced so okay. I apologize. Produce, okay. I apologize. When you, when 10 years ago, she was five. <laughs> and um, I mean, back then, Everything that I did for the first time ever, obviously, you're going to get that feeling. What on earth am I doing? Yeah. So it was, it was everything. The first time I got my day job, I 
why does everybody look so confident in what they're doing? I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm sitting here, I'm typing away. I don't know what I'm typing. Um, radio was also very confusing time. I When I first started, it was... I, People were listening. My brother was listening and he commented and said, you, you sound like you're sad. <laughs> Why do you sound like you're upset about something? Yeah. And it's just, yeah. And then after a while, um, and then like MC gigs, I mean, three days, $900. I'm like, people are paying me $900 to do this. Are you serious? And there was royalty um, present. And uh, yeah, every time, I do something for the first time, obviously you're going to have that, that feeling that you're not good enough or you don't know what you're doing. But I think after a while, I, I don't feel like that anymore. As much or? Not at all. I feel. Cause I think I, I want people to know that, that, that even someone, you know, in your position, Mm. you know, you, you've definitely felt those feelings before. There are, there are days where I, I honestly, I, I still feel like, oh, like I, oh, do people really want to listen to a podcast from me? You, you know see, what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. Do I, you know, like some, there are days where I'll, you know, be like, hey, we really want you as a magician. And then I'll, I'll sit down and be like, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll take it. But I know in the back of my head, it's going to be that little voice that says, are you really the best magician for the job? Are, are you really a magician? You know, like I have, I have a, a lot of these, uh, quite not quite often, not as much as I used to, but I, I, they still creep up once in a while. After years of- Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Especially when I meet magicians from outside the country. So I did a show in Manila, Grandmasters of Magic, and they were like, Nacho, we want you to be on the show. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, sure. When I get there and I look at these guys who have won awards, have been on America's Got Talent, all that stuff. And I'm like, why do they want me on this show? Right, you know, so, right. um, but yeah, I, it still creeps up. It still creeps up for me. Okay. Now I, f- I feel like a complete douche to say, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't feel don't. the imposter syndrome. No, 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 not I, at all. I have it when it is something that I am tackling on for the first time ever. For sure. And maybe a few times after that. And you see. felt it before. And I, I want people to know that, Hey, people like Faye, people like Azhar, people like Kong from Happy Cream, people like Easy, all, all have had these emotions before yeah. and I want everyone to know it's completely normal. It is completely yeah. normal. It, I think it's a little, you get a little bit more often at the start, Yeah, but I think it starts to dwindle down the more experience you have yeah. and, and all that stuff. Yeah. But also at the same time, um, to look at it another way, if say, for example, you do something and somebody actually says to you, you know, like, Oh, um, are you sure you're, you're going to do that? And you feel that imposter syndrome. I would take that as feedback mm. of whether or not I'm doing this the best way possible. Also, I, I question where is this comment coming from? Right. You know? oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, for that's me. That's true. When someone says something like, hey man, you sounded terrible today. And I'd be like, okay. Where is this comment coming from? Fair enough. You know, yeah. So I'm like, yeah. is this person hiding behind a keyboard? Right. Is yeah. this person someone that I genuinely would take advice from? Is this someone that has merit to what they're saying? Mm-hmm. Will they give me content? Why I ask, why are you, why do you think I sound terrible today? You know, that sort of thing. So, yeah. so yeah, I think and that's where I would. I agree. Yeah. 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 So Faye, um, we wanted to surprise all the guests on season one. Okay. Um, so that if you ever jumped into something new, if you were ever worried that you were an imposter or whatever, I wanted to leave you with a little gift. Okay. This moment right here. Um, so what we did was we, what is this? (laughs) Um, okay. We, uh, let me just... Okay. Oh, this is great for radio. Yeah, definitely. Um, the, yeah, yeah. The, this one? Can you just check real quick? Yeah. Yeah, but the, 
Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, sorry, sorry. Updated one. Oh, First time. It's all okay. So if you ever, so we're going to cut that out. So if you ever feel <laughs> insecure, if you ever feel like an imposter, if you ever had to go through these moments again, I wanted you to come back to this moment right here. Mm-hmm. We reached out to your circle of friends and family. Oh my God. And asked them, how has Faye impacted your life with what she does? I'm crying. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so the first person we reached out to and is Sharon. Oh my God. And this is what? Thank you. Oh, there's, like there's one less. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This is a trap. This is what Sharon had to say. Hey, Faye. It's me. They only gave me 60 seconds. So what I would like to leave you with is if ever you are in doubt of what you're doing or why you're where you are, I want you to know that there is nobody else here that can do what you do as good as you do it. There is no one else more suited for this role than you. And I think we can see that very well. You have been breaking barriers, smashing ceilings continuously, and I just cannot wait for you to keep on doing that in the years to come. Okay. You're doing amazing. Oh. Love you. Bye. How does that make you feel, man? Oh my God. It's a trap. <laughs> did you did you ever feel like, you know, some people would feel this way or, or they'd have your back this way or that you've impacted their lives this way? Oh. Thank you. Um... I don't know, dude. I think, but like as a person, I don't know, dude. I have no idea. Okay. So <laughs> we then reached out to another person. No. Uh, she's an artist. <sighs> you, you might know her as one of your best friends. <laughs> Uh, her name's Juju. Oh, you might know her. Obviously, you guys are going to go for and that. And this is what Juju has to say. Hi, babe. Whatever life throws at you, whatever it is that you're going through, I know that you always pull through it because I've seen it firsthand. And of all the people that I know who could pull themselves back up, rationalize the situation is you. You are an inspiration, babe, to me. And you know that I admire your strength and your passion from the get-go. Always remember that whatever happens, you are loved unconditionally, especially by me. And that I'm always here whenever you need me. I love you. Oh, my God. Now, people who generally... Everyone else has cried. Everyone else has cried, right? <laughs> it's not just me. I'm not the first one crying, right? It's not a competition. It's, a, <laughs> it's not a competition. <laughs> Um, but I didn't want to ugly cry. Let it out, man. Oh my God. We then reached out to one of your biggest fans. What? So this is our last audio clip. And uh, you might know her as Ira Ali. Oh. The prettier Ali okay. <laughs> daughter. Um, and this is, this is what oh. Ira had to say about her kaka. As a little sister, I've always looked up to you. So whenever I feel like I'm giving up on things... I always try to remind myself that if my sister can do it, you know, I can do it. You're definitely a superwoman and one of the hardest working person that I know. I honestly don't know how you're able to be a mom, um, handle like three different jobs and also doing side jobs and, and also have time for your family and friends. Unless maybe... I need someone like Lenny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, I'm always proud of all the things that you do. And you are definitely an inspiration to a lot of people, including me. And I definitely know you're always doing your best. And so I hope you get the time to have a rest and have some me time as well. 
But yeah, I I love you. Oh, so <sighs> if we were, if we could just leave you with one thing that I think uh, there, are, you know, there are always going to be days where we sort of doubt what we do and and the effects of what we do. If we're actually making an impact to the people we work with, the people we, you know, uh, keep close, the people we love. I just want you to know when things are, uh, you know, don't look too bright. Mm. There's at least three people there and three people in the studio that you've already made an impact on with what you do. And uh, I just want you to know that. Stop. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Thanks for leaving that at the very last. When <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, we, just, we just wanted you dude. to know that, hey man, I know there's some days where you might second guess or you might not feel super confident making that step, but there's there's already a group of people who are supporting you unconditionally nonetheless. So. And I think it's not just them. I think like you. <sighs> <laughs> Thank you, Faye. <laughs> I can't. You can take, take your time, Faye. Take your time. I think it's harder now mm-hmm. than when this airs. Yeah. I I'm it. not going to be here. Yeah, and um, that's why it, it hits really hard because. Um, you're kind of losing that support system that you've had for the longest time. Come here, buddy. Oh my God, it's so... Come here. Oh, dude, it's just... Oh. Did you have to do this? Did you really? <laughs> Our little gift to you. Oh right? my goodness. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we get so pride. caught up and we, we forget that we have a crew supporting us. We yeah. have we have cheerleaders. We have, you know, sometimes it feels like, oh, I have to do this all on my own, but I want you to know that, dude, that's that's <sighs> tip, that's like just tip, that's only the three that we know of, you know? And these are honestly, I mean, you you hit it right because Our these <laughs> Because these are the three people that I do much closer. I know, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, these are the three people who, when I need something that, you know, I know for a fact that they would just drop whatever it is. There are so many occasions where I've, you know, um, just told Juju, like, I need to talk to you. And she's like, all right, I'm at a wedding, but it's okay. I'm going to go. And, uh, you know, with Sharon as well, with so many coffees and us talking about motherhood and that helps a lot. And it's really not just Lani who helps me a lot with whatever it is that I'm going through in terms of motherhood, but the support system era is also my other limb. I think with, with party planning and everything. Oh, definitely. Oh, I'm going to miss that a lot. And you for just like listening to my rants before <laughs> our 6 a.m. coffee. It just, it helps. It helps. I think everything. So thank you for that. That was, an, that was nice. No worries, man. But also I, I wasn't planning on crying, but thank you. I, um, so I don't know if you know, but my ultimate goal with this podcast is for it to be a database. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, Mm -mm. someone who wants to be on a similar journey like you, someone who wants to start their barbershop, someone who wants to be a musician, someone who wants to be a fighter. I want this to be a database that they can sort of look back on and learn from. Because I really feel the stories here and the advice that everyone shares is evergreen. Mm -hmm. Uh, And if you could leave someone who's about to start their journey or who are you know, at a, at a crossroads or, or just in the middle, in the thick of things, what's one advice you could give them? <sighs> just do it. I think just jump in on it. And it's, don't forget, you always need a backup. Make sure there are people supporting you. But these people who are supporting you can call out on your bull. Shh. and uh, do it. I think you should just do it. I mean, I didn't, honestly, Juju was there when I first started to be a radio DJ and she told me that I could do it. I said, okay, I'll do it. 
I didn't, I didn't think I was good enough at that point. Cause I had no idea what I was doing. I knew I could talk, but because she was that louder voice inside and outside that I uh, realized that, okay, like I'll, I'll take it on. And I, I owe it a lot to her for giving me that opportunity and uh, look where I am now, right? It's not just radio, it's also MC. And uh, yeah, my goodness. That uh, is uh, it. Thank you, dude. My gosh. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on this podcast. And uh, we love you. Oh, uh, and uh, my, I'm very proud of you for doing this podcast. Thanks, Faye. That means a lot coming from you. That really does mean a lot. I wish you cried, but you know what? <laughs> We can't all have what we want. I could, I could have, one of us, one of us needed to, to, to give you a little bit more sane. This is I why know. I can't do a podcast. Yeah. This is why. And this is why I can't do a podcast that's super serious. I can't yeah. do it. It's not happening. But dude, thank you so much. I, like, I love you. Thank you. I love, I love your story. You. And I'm, I'm always going to be supporting you, man. We're done. We're done. No more. No more. Nobody.